One of the most effective ways to enhance the security of your application is by hacking it yourself. So in this video, we will explore the vulnerabilities present in my application and illustrate how they can be exploited by hackers. By understanding the methodologies that hackers follow to take control of your application, you can take a step forward to secure it and protect it from malicious attack. But before we dive into the process of identifying vulnerabilities, let's first take a step back and examine how the application works. Once we have a comprehensive understanding of the application structure and functionality, then we can begin the process of searching for vulnerabilities. So, let's get started. So basically, this is the login page where we submit our email and password with this format here. And there is also the register part where we create accounts. There is a student account, a teacher account, and a company account. So, they are different, okay, a little bit. So I have created a lot of accounts, so let's get back and log in with uh, one of them. So let's just log in with the, with the student account, all right? So this is the home page. In the, in the right side, there are suggestions uh, that told me about the uh, students that have the same sector as mine. Here in the middle, I can share, I can share pictures or documents. And uh, here in the left side, it's like a menu, my profile, notifications, groups, messenger, and uh, logout, okay? So we're gonna get into that uh, later. But now let's just uh, share a picture. And as you can see, I can like, comment, and comment to my post. It's returning who made that comment. And I can like, I can delete my post only. So that's cool. Now let's go to my profile. So this is my profile. Uh, a lot of information is related to me. I can change my profile image. And let's delete my uh, personal information and enter them again to show you how that's look like. So that's cool. And I can update them. So all of those are just some informations about me that represent my experience, my certificates or, you know, me okay it's my profile and here in the bottom there is a little button uh, that generate a resume for from my profile right in a pdf format so there is also the notification here uh, i don't have notification yet and the uh, messenger i still new here there is no conversation or stuff like this and also there is uh, groups now let's go and log with another account with the student2 account all right so i can search for student1 profile from here and go to this profile i can follow him and if i uh, refresh uh, in the student1 page i will find that there is a notification if i accept it uh, a conversation will create between me and the student1 and uh, we can send messages uh, it's based on WebSocket, so we can send a uh, message in both ways in a single open connection without needing uh, to refresh the page. And uh, that's cool. So after that, to show you the group section, let's log in uh, with a teacher account. So this is the teacher home page, all right? It's like the, the student, but uh, the difference is that the teacher uh, is the only one that have the ability to create groups. So if we go to the group section, we will find this little button here uh, to add a group. And when I click into it, uh, I will write the name of the group and the sector of students that I want to add and uh, search and it's returning all the students that I can add them from the little button here. So I'm gonna add student one and student two now if i click on this group it's given me all the members of it so if i get back into the student one account i will find that group that that is created by the teacher and we can talk here uh, as a group right there is also a, a company account but uh, it's a little bit different okay but uh, we're gonna talk about it later because that's gonna take a lot of time just representing the application so uh, we're gonna we're gonna let it for another video, right? 
So now let's start what we are interested on, which is hacking those things. So we're going to start with the register part. So let's create an account from here to see how the requests look like and uh, intercept that with verb proxy. So as you can see, the first request is an option method to ask the server what kind of methods you accept. So let's send that to the repeater tab and send the request. As you can see, those are the methods that are allowed. Now let's forward this one. And after, there is the actual request that we made, which contain my informations that I have uh, submitted before. So let's uh, send this to repeater and uh, send the request. And as you can see, we get a message, everything is okay, which means that the account was successfully created. Now let's go back and log in with the account that we have created before and try our first vulnerability, which is no SQL injection. So let's intercept the request with burp. And as you can see the option method again, let's forward it. And there is the actual request that we are interested on. And as you can see, this is the email and the password. Let's send that to repeater. So there is a post method uh, send it to the API slash uh, authentication and login with our credentials. So let's send the request and as you can see it's returning all my data and the password also. <laughs> so uh, I need to delete that I know. And if you notice it, it's setting cookies for me. Uh, so as you can see there is a student equal to true, that's mean I am a student and session which is a big number that of course we cannot brute force it or something like this so that's great now let's change my email address to an incorrect email and see the response again so as you can see it's telling me your credentials are incorrect let's now correct the email but change the password to an incorrect password and uh, look at the response as you can see, it's the same message. That's mean I can't brute force emails and uh, knowing which email is correct. Uh, that's cool. Okay. Now let's try a classic no SQL injection. So I'm going to keep the email as it is, but I will change the password to a JSON format and I'm going to explain what is that. So basically here, I'm gonna look for the person that have this email and his password not equal to null. So that's gonna happen in the MongoDB uh, processing stuff. And let's send this request. And as you can see, we get the person without knowing his password. There are a lot of pilots that you can use. I recommend you to read this article from Hacktricks. They provide a lot of uh, good pilots and different ways for no skill injections um, it's it's a really a good article so now as you can see my application is vulnerable to a no skill bug but because i made it vulnerable but this is not the way how i code the application at the first time so let's take a look at the source code and uh, as you can see here there is a post method is made it to the login api I create a variable called searching all and it's searching in the everything collection and just think a collection is like a table uh, in uh, SQL database if you are familiar with the uh, MySQL database so in SQL there are tables and in no SQL there are uh, collections all right so in this everything collection which is like a table I'm telling like find one guy that have an email equal to the email from the request and the password also is equal to the request that body that password all right so that's basically what's going to happen and when you do not find anything response with uh, 404 so it's vulnerable because we pass the user input directly but as i said before this is not how i code it so let's remove these lines and those comments now what i am doing is searching for the person who have the email address passed on the body because the email must be unique so it's gonna return one user and then if this user exists we're gonna compare his hashed password with the password from the body of the request 
That's mean when I pass the, that payload, it will be hashed and it will never equal to the real password of the user. So as you can see, I'm going to send the request again with the same payload and we cannot uh, bypass the authentication now because you know this pilot that i put inside the password it's hashed all right it's going to be hashed and compared to the real hash of the real password okay and they are different so mongodb will not process my json data that i pass into the password but there is a little thing actually here even we did that, even we are hashing passwords, that's cool. It's, it's like giving a little bit of security to my application. But what I want to see is that the email is still injectable. If I get back to Burb and instead of passing the correct uh, email, I'm going to change it to this pilot. But password is correct, right? I'm going to pass uh, a correct password. So what does that mean? I'm telling the application to give me back the person that his email not equal to null but the password is correct and as you can see it's working but of course we always need the password not the email but that's interesting isn't it so what we can do with this vulnerability now the email is injectable but the password is not so what actually we can do uh, to be honest i asked some people but i didn't get uh something like a real thing but if you know somehow we can exploit that okay uh tell me in the comments i'm happy to to hear that from you and of course we can we can brute force emails like we have uh we found the password but we don't know uh the email address of this password i know this is this is uh unrealistic yes but uh yeah you may encounter that you may find that somewhere you may get a password but you don't know which email address is is going to work with so you can brute force that you have a list of emails and you can just brute force them because of the, uh, this vulnerability but it's, it's still a vulnerability right there is also another article that talk about getting a remote code execution from a my from a, i'm sorry a no sql uh, injection it's great there are some uh, versions that I have not understand yet but I recommend you to read it so the next bug that we're gonna look for is XSS I tried a classic XSS on uh, the inputs when I was creating my account like entering instead of entering my username I'm gonna enter uh, script tags and some some XSS pilots but it doesn't work right uh, because my application is based on react.js in the front end and react.js prevent those kind of xss attack so what i know is that react.js uh, interpret everything as a string there is an article that explain all the ways we can get an xss uh, from an application that it's based on uh, react.js all right now despite all of this protection there is a file upload functionality where I can upload pictures so what about uploading an HTML file so let's try it so let's create a basic uh, HTML file called xss.html let's pass this here and delete those two lines and add an alert to confirm if it's vulnerable or not let's upload this file and see what we're gonna get let's add a description now let's get the link open it in another browser as you can see the alert is working now let's go back and write a real exploit so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna exploit this vulnerability this xss vulnerability to steal users uh, cookies all right and send them to me i'm gonna copy an ajax request from here because I, I, I just can't remember it and i'm gonna use python to listen on port 8000 and let's modify on this code so we're gonna send a get method to my IP address let me grab it first call and uh, let's create a variable containing the cookies and I need one more thing to declare the XHTTP variable now let's upload again and see what we're gonna get copy the link and uh, refresh as you can see the cookies are sent to me let me show you that again refresh the page 
and boom I get the user cookies now if I go to another uh, to another browser I go to the home directly without passing from the without doing the authentication uh, I can't see anything because I don't have cookies I'm gonna grab those cookies that I I have intercepted and I'm gonna add them here refresh the page again and as you can see I am that user right I am now student one without passing from the login page and there is also another way to get those cookies without a nexus vulnerability so have you ever asked how we know who post this picture like in here the test account uh, share this picture and we get the name the picture and company x share this picture and if i like it and i hover this like button we know the user that like it now how does work right so let's run a uh, bird proxy and intercept the request let's refresh the page and as you can see there are a lot of requests here so this one here to get the usernames and this one to get the profile and this one for notifications to get them and this one to get posts and that's the request that we are interested on so let's send it to repeater and just send the request as you can see it's returning back to me all the posts is available this is the first share the first uh, post there is the username the image and also there is something here which is the user id and if i just copy the student one user id and pass it here and just compare it with the session they are the same that's mean this is the user id of the student one all right if i copy the user id of the test account and i paste it in my session refresh the page now i am the test account and also i can become a company a teacher and so on so this is like an idle vulnerability all right so uh that's it for this video i am sorry about making it so long but i want to talk about a lot of things and um, thank you for your time and if you learn something uh, don't forget to like uh, and subscribe to my channel so i can do more videos